I think the big, the big first question for a lot of people is like, will it affect me? Yes or no? And if it does, when can I expect that to happen? So um, what, what's your take on who needs to report and who's excluded? The, the short answer is everyone who's a public company is in the U.S. is covered. One of the things that was very closely watched is, was um, how will the SEC treat so-called FPIs, foreign private issuers? So uh, companies that are not U.S. Regist uh, registered companies, but that trade in the U.S. or have registered stock here. Um, the answer is they are subject to the rule basically exactly the same as, um, as U.S. public companies. You know, there is not sort of a substituted compliance regime for ISSB or CSRD, even if you're subject to those regimes. So if you're an international but trade in the U.S. and are a public company, a public reporting company in the U.S., you are subject to these rules. There are some accommodations for smaller companies, but mostly those are on the form of the timeline uh, for compliance. You know, there are a few things that the small, the smaller companies, the smaller public companies um, are not subject to. So for example, some of the attestation requirements are scaled that only apply to the large accelerated filers or accelerated filers. But for the most part, it's a very broad sweeping rule. I'll also underscore the IPO issuers point. You know, you may not be a public company today. And as a non-public company, you may be subject to things like you know, um, the California rules or CSRD or something like that. But if you have, if you are planning on going public, these rules will apply in IPO registration statements for the most part. Now there are some, you know, limitations on that, some of the GHG emissions disclosures, et cetera. But for the most part, if you, you, you should be ready to kind of build the appropriate, um, the appropriate uh, kind of control regime, et cetera. So if you go, if you do IPO, you'll be ready. Great. So, um, a lot of people may may wonder, you know, whether they're in an FBI and already have to do other work, you know, mandated work elsewhere in the world, or they're already doing voluntary reporting on a lot of climate there. Um, what it what it means in short is that you still need to follow the SEC disclosure rules. You might already be disclosing all kind of climate related information, but follow the rule, do what what you have to do. So where do you need to report that from an SEC's point of view? in your regular way filings. I mean, one of the points of debate in the proposal and in the comments was, should there be sort of a separate report? I mean, you, you um, could imagine that the SEC requires a separate form that gets filed on a different timeline. That's not where things really landed. It's really built straight into your 10K or your 20F if you're an FBI. So it's your standard regular way reporting. The one exception is for the quantified GHG emissions, which we'll get to a little bit, uh, there is a delay permitted there where essentially you can incorporate by reference to the following fiscal year's second quarter uh, filing. So that is the one accommodation, but generally this will live in your SEC reporting. And what that means is it's subject to all the same sort of SOX control procedures, all the same assumptions about rigor, the same litigation risk. It will be right there in your, in, your, uh, in your regular SEC reporting. So in principle, pretty simple, all in the same document, no new forms, straightforward. In principle. In principle. Great. Then let's talk a little bit about that, that reporting timeline. Now, um, you know, there's, there's a, a number of different re re 